there are obstacles to overcome to diversify the sport, just some basic ones. Um, and the, the ability to, to spread the game, I mean, this is obviously a challenge. But once you do get, uh, you know, people of color in at the youth level, I think the idea of making them comfortable in this environment uh, has to happen. And, you know, a number of the complaints, a number of the, you know, the really awful stories you do here in terms of racism often happen at the younger level. Um, and I'm wondering what can be done maybe at the youth level so that players who are in these environments don't early on decide, you know what, this is uncomfortable. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be a part of the sport. How can we change that? Well, I think it's zero tolerance, Liam. It's the NHL supports USA Hockey. NHL supports Hockey Canada. And everyone has to be lockstep. And I found that you get people's attention when you cut off their water, you take away their finances, you interfere with their money. And if they don't agree with that, hey, you know that funding you guys are looking for? It's no longer going to be there. You know those checks your executives are getting every single week? It's not happening anymore. And then you'll see things change rather quickly with young boys and girls playing the game of hockey. It has to start there. And it's important to see that people could be involved in the game of hockey. You don't have to be an NHL player. Blake played at a very high level in the women's league, winning championships, and she's still involved in the game of hockey as a professional scout. Like, people have to understand there's opportunities within the game, if you love it, to stay involved. You don't have to play on an NHL team. You could be involved in pro hockey, the highest level in an organization, without playing. There's a, there's a place for everyone if you love the game that much. Yeah, Hanson, you said everything that I could have even imagined to say. Educating young kids first about the words that they can and can't say in the locker room, just as a start on the ice, as a start educating the referees and saying, hey, if this is going on, it is not happening. That kid is out because we want people to be comfortable on the ice, off the ice, in the locker room. We have to change the culture and the environment within our sport. And the one thing I want to point out about this, and I think that answering, and you guys hit it right on the head, it starts with USA Hockey and Hockey Canada, and they have to be intentional about going out and making sure, and, and, I'm, and I know that we're doing enough, we're doing a lot, a lot of different teams are doing a lot of work in the inner cities for underserved communities. I'm talking about the families that can actually afford to play this game. Cause let's be honest, there are so socioeconomic uh, barriers to playing the game. I'm saying we have to, as a game, USA hockey has to be intentional about making sure that the environment is inclusive and welcoming because why would you ever put your kid in that, in that environment if you don't think they're going to be welcome. And I think it's incumbent upon USA hockey and hockey Canada to educate, as you're suggesting, to make sure they have the platforms and they're intentional about going out and making sure families think it's a safe and nurturing environment for their kids. And this old school attitude that it, the sanctity and the and the beauty and the and the of the game that everyone talks about hockey culture has to be willing to change. And until that's willing to change, uh, we have a problem. And for me, I think it's going to be better. The more diverse the game becomes, I think the locker room is going to be more vibrant. You learn from, from people's differences. You learn about other people. You become a better citizen. I think I hope that the game, that hockey, that, like Anson's saying, that the leadership uh, within USA Hockey is taking notice and is making changes.